All right, here we go. We're doing an induction cooktop challenge. Uh, the purpose of this is basically to test out the um, setup in Stevo's car here because we've decked it all out with batteries and induction cookers. But we have to work out which is going to be the best induction cooker for this setup. So I'll uh, take you through. I might even let Steve take you through setting it up. Tell us like just about the battery you've got first. So we've got the 100 DCS slimline underneath the floor. Yeah. With the uh, Red Arc 1500 watt inverter. And in my car, uh, I've got the same DCS 100 in the back um, with the DCS 80 up the front. So my car's got a Victron combiner joining them together and you've got the BC DC 40. The 40 amp BC DC, yeah. Yeah, all right, let's do that. All right, show us the setup. All right. Got a nice table that comes out. Beautiful. Sweet. Red Art push button uh, remote, so you can just turn it on without having to try and chase the little trigger underneath. Yep. And don't forget the fridge. Beverages. Yep, very good. Uh, and, and I can then, see uh, yep. over here we've got the Cymarine shunt, so we can have a look at this. Uh, we've got, showing the front, what is it? That's the start battery, that's just a stocky start battery. That's the um, TCS 100 in the back, so we're not even starting at 100%. Although, I don't know if I believe this, the percentages. I'm just going to look at the voltage here. Um, we can have a look through here. Uh, that one. Oh, that's it's 29 degrees. Doesn't feel that warm. Anyway, uh, what else have we got here? Barometric pressure. Uh, oh, it's like the, that bit. We're going to see current. This is what I want to look at soon. So if we turn the inverter off. It's using nothing. Turn it back on. So that's measuring the current out of the system. Alright, let's show us some, um, I guess... The magic of this is the induction cooktop, yeah? It is. So, induction cooktop with the nice little uh, bracket that attaches to the uh, pull-out table. Brilliant idea. Sits in there nice. And this is what it's all about. This is why we're doing this test. Uh, this one's uh, Safri, Safari, I don't even know how you say it. S-A-F-I-E-R-Y. Um, this one looks the best and we'll talk about that in a minute uh, but we've got a bunch of others we're going to have a look at too. I'll grab them out. All right. uh, I've got an extension lead coming from um, my car over here so we'll do uh, one of the cookers on Steve's car and I'll do um, one on mine as well. We've got four to choose from and the thing is with these induction cookers and I've played around with them a little bit now we've got um, yeah, the, the Safri one We've got this new wave one. This is actually the first one I ever had. Uh, Wobble put me onto this. It's actually a cracker. Uh, Westinghouse, we got that one just during the week to have a play with. Um, and we've got a, a Eurochef. That's the Eurochef one. All right. So, Steve, I want you to give me your opinion now, in order, aesthetically, which looks the best. Well, what looks the best, I think, is a, a Safari. That sort of made me think, yeah, it looks all right. And then we went to the Westinghouse, which looked, uh, uh, sorry, the Fenner yeah, no, Westinghouse. Yeah. That one there looked all right too. But uh, when using the Safari, you've got a little bit of a uh, basic option, which is me to a T. Everything basic's good. This one here just looked a bit funny and feels a bit sort of cheapish. Yeah. You know, as much as it's got pretty, pretty pictures. This but... is Euro Chef. And this one here, believe it or not, was our first one that we sort of started with. I've actually keep going back to that one. It's a, um, it's more friendly when it comes to all the adjustments and controlling the heat. And uh, I don't know, like that one there you can use and it looks very professional and very classy. But going back to that one still sort of is friendlier for the battery, I think. All right, so aesthetics, best to worst. This is number one, two, three, four, yeah? So what they look like, one, two, three, four. I think I agree. Yeah. And the next big test is functionally what they do because I think the order's going to change. Yeah. Hey, Damo. I thought I'd pull out of the boat the, uh, the butane uh, gas one as well just to see how good we are. Uh... So let me get the. So how much are they? <laughs> 30 bucks. All right. And how much are these ones? Uh, 50 to 100. And how much is the power to run them? <laughs> okay. Three grand? Yeah, about that. <laughs> Yeah, but these are way, they're way more efficient though, aren't they? Yeah, well, you know what? I've tried boiling water with this thing when it's windy and it's shit out. Well, I think that's what we'll see. This is, this is where these will outperform that. 
Um, but we, there is no economics in this. We're not saying that um, induction cooking is the economical way to go camping. That's not what we do. We drive patrols that are 5.6 litre supercharged on massive wheels. We're not here for economy. All right, let's get this test underway. Oh, that's a bit fancy, Steve-o. Oh, look at this. Oh, right, that just like comes up out of the cup holder. Yeah, let's see you turn the limb on at once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for this test, we have to like get some sort of, um, you know, uh, measuring stick with all of these. So, um, I did a test during the week, so I, I do have a bit of a heads up on this. And what we're gonna do is try and aim for a temperature of 140 degrees um, and about a thousand watts. So we know, um, we've, we're both running 1500 watt inverters. Uh, the problem really isn't with the inverter because they do spike. They can go higher than 1500 watts if you want for a period of time. Um, but the battery, so uh, in the back of this one, there's the 100, DCS uh, 100 swim line, that's got a continuous discharge of 120 amps. 120 amps times 12.8 volts, so like a nominal lithium voltage, works out to about 1500. So we could run it at 1500, but that's like red line. So I would like to try and run them at around 1000 watts. Um, therefore, we're not like going into the red uh, when, we're, when we're testing these systems. It's gonna end up being 100 amps, a little bit of above or below, something like that. That's, that's the target, so we're not just like absolutely murdering these batteries. All right, up first, we have, what are we doing first? Doing... A uh, uh, new wave? Yep. And what'd you call this one? Eurochef. Eurochef. All right, you do the new wave. Uh, I might talk about it a bit, and um, then uh, All right. All right. I'll do the... So, new wave on Steve's. Um, and so I'll go in close here. I do like this one functionally. I'll show you What I like about the the new wave. I hope I'm saying that right. We can pick I don't know if you can see it here It says 900 1500 watt 2000 watts so I can cycle between which wattage I want um, And then temperature wise I can set the temperature. So that's 190 degrees. It probably doesn't show up well on the um, camera, but so you know, I've got that set at 140 now. I don't know if you can see it. And I can set it at 900 watts. If I go around to the Eurochef, here we go over here. Um, so this one, uh, I can sort of do this. So if I press a button, are we on? We're on. So it's gone straight to 1800 watts. So that's four watts. I can drop this down to, well, I can't do 900. I can do a thousand, so I'll do that. Um, and then I can do, it's got minutes Celsius, so I can go over and change to um, temperature. How do I do that? Here we go, not like that. Yeah, we're well versed on this one. Minutes Celsius. See, that's the thing, This 1000 watts equals 160 degrees, only 140 degrees. But then when I go back to the watts function, how did I do that? I think I did press this button. It's kind of a bit, I'm not sure what's going on here to be honest. Time, it's, it is a little bit unusual. So it's changed back to 160. So I'm not sure if I can, I'm just gonna set it at 140 and we'll have a look at that app on my phone, the DCS app, and that will tell me what the actual wattage is. Okay, let's get this test underway. We'll start them up and see what they draw. All right, on we go Steve-o. You turn yours on. All right, yours start up. Is doing 72 amps. Mine, whoa, it's like 1800 watts straight off the bat. We'll go back to a thousand. All right, mine start up is doing, says 59, but I'm running two batteries, so that is actually doubled. So, really, I'll do that. Um, so, mine's doing 108 to get it started. All right, we're using this fancy stuff. This is like fancy butter. It's not supposed to smoke and it's like ghee, ghee butter or something. Oh my ghee. Um, it's got a, like a high smoke point, doesn't go rancid. This isn't a cooking show, it's an electrical show. But anyway, that's what we're doing. And uh, up here, we've got some barramundi, care of my next door neighbors, bit of panko crumb. I reckon we just do a, a, a couple of bits each, just to test, and then we'll move to the other cooker. All right, you do a couple, I'll do a couple. All right, in we go. It's amazing how quick it gets to the boiling point. 
put that up there out the way of the flies. All right. So, oh, mine's sizzling. Yours isn't sizzling yet. No. Nah. Although yours was 900. All right, let's look in here. So we've got 74 amps, 75 versus still going 107. I do wonder about this app sometimes. I'm going to refresh it. I think that's my battery, that one. Come on, DCS. You can do it. There you go. No, it is. It's cranking 105. Have a look at that. All right. But we're sizzling. We're cooking. Uh, so... The DCS with a, a BCDC 40 in the back of Steve's, very simple. Car starts, 40 amps, charges the battery. Easy as that. Mine's a little bit more convoluted like the rest of my life. Um, with the DCS 80 and 100 at the back, when I look at the app, it's only showing half the amps that I'm using. But when I start the car, whatever the alternator can give, that's what it will charge. So I can charge both the front and battery at, you know, 50, 60, sometimes even 70 amps if it's low. So um, mine will recover quicker, but it is, again, more convoluted. Um, there is an isolate, not an isolate, a Victron combiner in there. So when the start battery gets to 12.8 volts, um, it'll isolate, and that means um, I can always start the car. So usable amp hours in my system is 164, something like that. Uh, Steve's is about, or he's got all of it, 100. That's going cool. Look at that. Oh, I thought this ghee stuff isn't supposed to smoke. Anyway, ooh, I think I'm a little bit over on that one. Ooh. I'm cooking like in the oil though, so but mine's done. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to turn mine off. Um, so yeah, could use a little bit of power. Not much. Yours is pulling 74. So the Eurochef actually pulled a lot more than the, the new wave. All right, I'm gonna pull this out and this can be our first one, okay? All right, give it a taste. Oh, best part about the show. Oh, a bit too. Mm. That one. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Very good. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> How the other half are living, I don't know. <laughs> no, I am. Mm. Oh, the test must continue. So that's um, new wave. I think the new wave actually performed better in that one because we could set the watts and temperature. This one seemed to make it up as it went. There must be some algorithm between it. I think it made biscuits too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, I know. That's for the dog now. Um, let's go on to Safari and Westinghouse. All right, these are the arguably the best two looking setups here. So I'm gonna go Westinghouse. We'll do power, what do we do here? 1200 watts. Okay, I got it on a thousand. A thousand watts, pulling oh, 120 amps. She's, she's pulling it. All right. Um, and then if I press temperature, it says 240. No, I don't want that. I want 140 degrees. You can't see it, but I can. It says 140. But then when I go to what the wattage is, it's 1200 now. So unlike the new wave, I can't independently set wattage and temperature. Anyway, I reckon the smoke point is about 140. So I'm going to do that. And my wattage is saying 116 amps. Right, now how does yours work, Steve? Well, this one's made for me. Simple. <laughs> turn her on and then you can set it from uh, it's just got one like, if I move forward you might be able to see yeah. it's pretty basic so 1 to 10 but obviously with my system I'm not going to be running it at 10 because it will blow the uh, yeah it's a 2.2 kilowatt hot plate I think we only want to pull about 1500 watt out of it so I'm, I'm happy to run this at about P4, P5 yeah so let's see what that's pulling. So we've got 110 amps on Steve's setup versus 113 on my setup. Actually, they're pretty damn similar. I'd say they're identical as far as consumption. All right, I can see that smoking. We need some more barramundi in there. All right, let's do it. All right. Have a look at this barramundi. I mean, he calls himself a... Uh, 
four dry <laughs> specialist, but I reckon he's got some talent here too. Bit of panko, mm -hmm. bit of salt and pepper, no shortage on the salt or pepper. Uh, all right, yeah. Nice. We're into it. Need a bit of self-leveling going on here. Self-leveling, yeah. Time to be back to leak, baby. Yeah. Might as well put some more on. That was very tasty. Yeah, I reckon. All right, let's cook. 117 you know what? versus 12 and a half, uh, 121. Go crazy, put it all in, why not? You gonna do the other one or not? Yeah, we'll be all right. Um, all right, so yeah, we're pulling, we're pulling some decent current here. So on my Victron, uh, sorry, DCS, when this number drops below 12.8, it'll isolate the start battery and I'll be using the rear battery alone. So I'll just keep my eye on that. So it's on 12.97 at the moment. Interestingly, if I look at the current on mine now, it's showing 1.5 amps. So the Westinghouse thinks it's got to temperature and it's just stopped. And I must admit, I did this, oh, we're gonna do some turning here. I did this the other day. Um, we did a bit of a test at work and the duty cycle on the Westinghouse, it seemed to turn off a lot quicker and take a lot longer to turn back on. Like even now that the sizzle's gone and like it hasn't turned back on again, it's 1.8 amps. Um, this one, Safri, yeah, still crunching the, the current out of it, but at least it's cooking like, this one is sizzling a lot more than that one. So if I was to, um, on the Safri one, just turn it down to that P4. Yeah. It starts the cycle very similar to that one. Well, I'll turn like to, this is exactly what happened to me during the week. I couldn't get this to like jump back on. I'm going to turn it up to 160. There we go. She's on. Oh, look at that! 147 amps. 150 amps is pulling. That's massive. That's huge. Still, and it's cycling on and off. That's that duty cycle. You can hear it clicking, it must be like a relay or something. Just going tick, 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 tick. Whereas yours, yours is sizzling nicely. Yeah. And is yours doing the clicky click thing? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, six amps. So it's got a temperature, 60, 80, 90, 100, 108. Back down, so yours is cycling as well. Yeah, so it gets up the temp and they start to work efficiently, which is good. Look at this though, it's like 150. Because I put it on 160 degrees, I'll go back to 140. Now what's going to do? Yeah, now it's died. It's not cycling at all now. Or as yours is, and the new wave did. The Euro Chef performed better than this. I hope you're able to appreciate what this is doing when it's cycling, and the torture it's putting on the battery. Look, mine's doing nothing. It's like it's given. I've got to put this on 160 to get it going. But mucking around with these, when you torture the battery and you see it drop down and you're working it hard, but if you just let it rest for 10 minutes, yeah. you actually see your voltage just pick back up again. And it's like, you feel it, like you can start again. It rebounds, yeah. It rebounds, yeah. Right. So, induction cookers, why? Because we can. Uh, the advantages. Um, is we get to play with toys and look at current and amps, uh, current and volts. But like, it's a little bit windy at the moment. If we did have that old uh, um, gas cooker out, we would be struggling to get flame. If we run out of the little bottle of gas, that means we've got to go get more or carry more. This, we just go for a drive and it charges up. Um, you know, there is solar on your car. Um, but to be honest, I'd like, even with, I think yours is a 175 watt panel or something? Yeah, 170, yeah. I can drive for about 20 minutes and it will give me the same charge um, straight off the alternator because I'm getting that like 140 amps as what the solar panel can do an entire day. So, um, solar panels are great to just keep your fridge running, that sort of stuff. When you're talking high current devices like this, you need to recharge quickly. So, minimum battery charger is a 40 amp or even that Victron combiner. How many times have you gone out, Dave, and you've gone 
chilly, it's a bit windy and we got the old gas and we got some like, oh, yeah, cardboard yeah. sitting up on the side to stop the wind from blowing out because you can't boil the water. No, nah, even little things like that, you're not going to get that with these. That Ziggy that I've got, that blows out all the time. Like, and it's, uh, it's just an excuse to drive the patrol around just to charge up the batteries again. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Alright, this is looking good. I'm getting hungry looking at this. Oh yeah. What's going on with yours mate? Slowing down is it? I must admit, I'm not over the moon with this Westinghouse thing. It seems to, yeah, just tick on and off a lot. Functionally, I don't think it's as good as the Safri. I think this is going back to number one. I reckon we've uh, we pinned it the first time, really. Yeah. This the looks, new, the, looks new the base. The was good when we first started. Mm. And that was our introduction to sort of start doing all this with the batteries and setting them up in the back of the car. But to go with this, it's like slimline going in our little table. It looks neat, it's tidy. Oh. And it works great. Without a doubt, that looks the best out of all of them. My personal opinion, the new way functionally works better because you can adjust the wattage and temperature independently. But this is like, don't think about it, just turn it on, put it on P4 and you're done. There's something a bit <laughs> to be said about um, simplicity, actually. <laughs> I think we're just showing off a bit now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we've knocked out, I don't know, I can't remember what it started at. 75. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. This is why I don't trust the percentage thing. Um, so that's dropped to 73. 12.8 12, <clears throat> 12 is usually 20% of a lithium battery. Um, down here, well, Westinghouse is, it's either doing everything or nothing. Look at that. I don't know if you can appreciate that, but it's it's either 150 or one. It was a, uh, Interesting. What's the temperature of the battery? Uh, um, let's say that. So we got. Oh yeah. So that's your battery thermometer, is it? Yeah. So I've got that set on the battery now, and that's interesting. So everyone sort of says, "Oh, is it under the floor too hot?" But look at that. Thirty degrees. What did we start at? 20, 21, 21, yeah. Twenty-one degrees. Mine's, so it's jumped up a little bit. Mine's on thirty-five degrees. Yeah. So underneath the floors, there's enough room. There's, there's 50 mil. We've got plenty of room under the floors to be able mm. to contain the, uh, the temperatures. It looks after it. I've got thermal cut out. The inverter's got thermal cut out. Yep. I think it's really fine. Yeah. Ooh, how are, we looking? are we going to share this with the girls? Nah. Nah. We're, I'm sure <laughs> they've got plenty of wine inside. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another reason to have an induction cooker. <laughs> We can do it outside and they don't know what's going on. Sneak out makes the munchies. Oh, so good. Oh. Love you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at Steve's. This is all like all golden brown, looking good. Westinghouse over here, like it's not even really cooked. And I've pumped this up harder and it's chewing more current. It's like, you can hear it clicking in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah. Functionally, they will all cook your food eventually, but functionally, Westinghouse, I think, is the worst. I'm eating out of yours, Steve. No, you're not. <laughs> you're on mine now. You're going to have your underdone stuff. <laughs> you done, Steve-o? Yeah. Do you want, do you want me to make yours look a bit better? Hang on, that's what they should look like. <laughs> Give me that, mate. I've had to crank mine up to 180 now just to get it going, because I want to eat. I don't want to get nothing. Um, but that looks good. Maybe entree can be made. Oh yeah. Oh no. That looks a bit of mean it goes on. Hey, what fork do you want? We're going to have to giving it a kick in the gut. I've cranked this up to 1400 watts. Although, it's pulling 170 amps. Hey mate, you're going to burn my car down, man. Oh no, maybe I'll turn it down. <laughs> the thing is, the battery system with a single DCS-100 probably wouldn't even allow you to do that. It's only because I've got the extreme in the front of my car that's letting it do it. So, yeah, this Westinghouse is, is out. All right, so that's disappeared pretty quickly. How did the batteries rebound? Mine, 13.2 um, volts, so it's jumped back up. It says 96%, I don't know if I believe that or not, but it didn't really dent mine that much. Stevo's, um, 
Yeah, you're on 13.17, which is still high-ish. Um, state of charge saying 67%. What a starter, 85? 70, 75 or something like that. I don't know. It, it didn't knock that much out, to be honest. And we cooked a, a fair, like, decent cook-up. Right, so... Basically, we've got to decide which one of these units... Like, cost-wise, the Safri one was probably the most expensive. I can't remember which one it was, but... Um, uh, Westinghouse, I think it was like a hundred bucks. The new wave, I bought it in like a kit for 250 and it had like saucepans and two cookers and other stuff, but I'm gonna say that's probably a hundred bucks. They're all give or take a hundred bucks, they're not that dear. Um, all right, which one do you reckon we should choose? What's gonna go in this whole new, um, what yeah, we yeah, pull out drawer system. And pull out drawer system, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm really happy with the uh, Safri. I'm thinking, stick with our first design yeah because it cooked well and had full control over the uh, amount of power I was using out of the battery that's meant it's simple it's it's something that you can not have to sit there and try and study and pull out an app and try and work out how to use it like it's just up or down and control yeah. put on p4 and go yeah yeah I must admit and I do like the um the Safri uh top fits into like this little shroud we've made and that also fits one of those collapsible sinks in there so if you didn't want the cooktop you could have a sink in there like it's more adaptable than the other ones i think that is safri for the win that's what we're going to do yeah definitely i want to have some more fish <laughs> <laughs> nice 